Good morning. It's good to have this number out with us today, and, and we just want to welcome everyone. I, we want to remind you today is our Thanksgiving meal, and with the numbers like they started doing and things like this, we decided just to make this a drive through meal. So uh, that will start between 4 and 5. So if you called in and placed an order uh, between 4 and 5, you need to drive through and pick those up. If you're a deacon would like to help hand those out between there, if you'll get here about 345, uh, we'll get everything lined up and, and be ready to hold, hand those out starting at 4 o'clock. Uh, this Wednesday night, there will be no prayer meeting, so uh, they give people time to, to enjoy their family and, and ladies to cook or whatever they need to do, and we'll take Wednesday night uh, off this week. Just remember uh, the pulpit committee. Uh, continue to remember them. Uh, Richard and Pat King, remember them. Miss Carpenter, uh, I think she came home and was doing okay. So let's remember her, uh, Earl Graves, she idle called and said her brother was back in the hospital. Continue to remember Susan Larry Rogers. Uh, Julie Boyd broke her foot and she's uh, uh, waiting on appointment to go to the doctor in Knoxville. So remember Julie and Brett. Uh, the pulpit committee, Freddie Davis, Anna Moon and Beverly, Danny Carter, the people traveling. Did I leave anybody off? Anybody else got a prayer request this morning? Let's remember Jim and Beverly. They're having company this week, and they have some traveling, so let's remember them. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this beautiful week you've given us, Lord, and we thank you for this another opportunity to come out to thy house. Lord, we just ask you to be with our country and our state and our county, Lord, and Lord, just be with the doctors and the scientists as they'll come up with a vaccine for us for this, this virus, Lord. Lord, we just ask you to be with our church and our pulpit committee, Lord. You'll just lead, guide, and direct us, Lord, and send us the man you have us to have. Lord, we just ask you to be the many sick of our church and our community, Lord, that you'll just lay your healing hands upon all of these, Lord, that, that your will be done, Lord, that you'll just touch and heal their lives according to you. And Lord, we just ask you to be with Brother Jim today as he brings the message. Just lead, guide, and direct him. We just thank you for all the blessings of life and everything that you bestowed upon us. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Good morning. It's good to see everybody today. We are glad you are here. We're glad you're joining us on Facebook. Uh, do continue to pray for all those that Brother Tim mentioned this morning and uh, pray for us as we begin our worship this morning. We're going to continue to sing our call to worship forever. Let's stand and sing together this morning. to the Lord our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good. He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. With a mighty hand and outstretched arm. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong. The setting sun, his love endures forever, and by the grace of God we will carry on, his love endures forever, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. 
His love endures forever, His love endures forever. We're going to continue to worship today <clears throat> and singing, I'd rather have Jesus. I 
sing Break Bread Together. Stand and sing, He has come into this place. <clears throat> we have come into His house and gathered in His name to worship Him. We have come into His house and gathered in Christ the Lord, worship Him, Christ the Lord. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify His name and worship Him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify His name and worship Him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify His name and worship Christ the Lord. Worship Him, Christ the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you. Please take your Bibles and turn in the Old Testament to the book of Psalms, Psalm 103. Psalm 103, verses 1 through 12, will be our text this morning. Psalm 103, verses 1 through 12. It's Thanksgiving, and so that's going to be uh, the topic that we're going to be looking at this morning. Uh, we're going to leave our study in the Gospel of Mark. We'll come back to it come the first of the year. Um, Advent begins next Sunday. It's Thanksgiving message this uh, t today, this Sunday. And then uh, we'll begin looking at Christmas themes uh, through December. Uh, Advent's just right upon us. I had planned, I told you last week we'd be back in Mark, but I, Advent snuck up on me. And uh, so we're going we're gonna to look at some Christmas themes beginning next Sunday. Um, 
Let me encourage you with something. This is a pre-sermon before the sermon, if there is such a thing. Um, COVID numbers are going up. Uh, please use your head. Uh, the deacons around here are doing everything they can to protect you. Uh, your temperature is taken when you can't come in. The ionized machine is on. Uh, Polly uh, cleans. Uh, you're doing everything we can to protect yourself for coming here. Um, but just be wise and use your brain. All right? Now, what's to be our posture in the midst of all of this? Well, we just keep pushing on. Amen? Amen. We just keep pushing on. No matter what. As long as we can have church, we're going to have church, get together, and we're just going to keep praying that um, the Lord will intervene and bring healing from this coronavirus one way or another, and we're just going to watch His activity. But as we watch Him, our position is we just keep pushing on. So in pushing on, we're going to be talking about Thanksgiving this morning. And in pushing on, we're going to be celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, during the month of Advent. Okay? So, don't be downcast. I know this is um, getting long, isn't it? Really is. But perseverance, that's what we do. We just keep on keeping on. Okay? All right. Now the sermon. Psalm 103, please uh, stand out of respect for God's Word, and I'll read these verses for your hearing. Oh, before we do, would you turn around and wave at about 73 people? Good. All right. Psalm 103, verses 1 through 12. Again, the theme is Thanksgiving. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being, praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses and deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is His love for those who fear Him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has He removed our transgressions from us. Amen. Thank you. Would you be seated, please? Back years ago when I lived, we lived in Harrison, Arkansas, my folks came to visit. We went up the road just about uh, 40 miles is Branson, Missouri, and um, Sons of the Pioneers were, they had a show there. And uh, we went to the show. Mom and Dad really enjoyed that. Actually, these guys were not the sons. They may have been the grandsons or the great-grandsons of the Pioneers. But one of the songs they sung is one I know you're familiar with. It goes like this. Home, home on the range. You, you, aren't you glad you pay me for preaching and not singing? Where the deer and the antelope play. Where seldom is heard a discouraging word. And the skies are not cloudy all day. Now, the song says that out on the range, seldom is heard a discouraging word. You believe that? I don't either. I don't either. I, I, I would imagine there's lots of discouraging words out there on the range. At least <clears throat> around my life, I hear a lot of discouraging words, particularly in this time. 
A lot of discouragement. I saw my doctor this last week, and he said there are lots of patients who are coming in to see him who are discouraged. Every Monday, I go to the pastor's conference in Athens, the Associational Pastor's Conference, and, and some of those pastors are really, really discouraged. Some of our churches, some of our Southern Baptist churches in this association have started up and then they've had to close down. They've started up again and closed down again because people in the church have got COVID and they thought the best thing to do per, to protect the congregation was to close down. But, but that's been discouraging to pastors. It seems like wherever I go, there are people who have discouraging words. You know, I've even heard church folks say discouraging words. Now, none of you. It's all the others that aren't here this morning. Amen? It's all of them. Uh, did you know I've even been known to utter a discouraging word? I thought surely she would say amen at that point. But... Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, we should not be discouraged people, no matter what the circumstances are. We should not be um, complaining people or demanding people or grumbling people. Rather, what should we be? We should be thankful people. Psalm 103 has some reasons for God's people to be thankful. And we're going to look at some of those reasons this morning. But I want to go down a couple of side roads first. There, there's a couple of things here at the very beginning of this psalm that's real intriguing to me, and, and I find very interesting, and I want to share those with you to begin with. In verses 1 and 2, notice, if you will, first of all, we see... David talking to himself. That's, no, notice that's how the psalm begins. Most psalms begin by talking to God. But David begins talking to himself. Notice verse 1. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being, praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. It's almost as if David is saying, Now, soul, come on. Get with it. Remember, don't forget all of God's benefits. You see, there is a time where we are to talk to ourselves. When a brother or sister is discouraged, downcast, if that's you, my dear brother, sister in the Lord, let me encourage you to talk to yourself about the truth of God's Word, the truth of your situation, the truth of who God is, the truth of what God's doing, the truth of God's promises to you, and you end up worshiping Him when you do that. No, you're not crazy if you talk to yourself regarding the truth of God's Word. As a matter of fact, that's a very sane thing to do. So this morning, if you're downcast, discouraged, most, most helpful thing I could say to you is get along with God and just begin talking to yourself about the benefits that God's given to you. I remember one time I was in Walmart years ago. No, not too many years ago, but some years ago. But I still remember the, uh, the situation. I was walking around in Walmart, and this guy passed me, and he was talking real loud to himself, I thought. As a matter of fact, I thought the fella had some issues. And so I thought, well, maybe I better... Well, no, I was just curious. And so I followed him around a little bit and, and to see if he was going to be okay or, or whatnot. And, and, and you know what? After I, he, he kept just talking real loud, I finally got close to him and I found I saw something in his ear. 
He was talking to somebody on the phone. But it looked like he was talking to himself. It is very appropriate to talk to yourself regarding God's ways, who God is, and God's promises. Particularly if you're discouraged, remind yourself God's still on the throne. He has not abdicated at all. He's still in charge. He gives grace for whatever we face in life. Just remind yourself of the truths of God's Word. Now, there's something else intriguing here. David says to himself, worship the Lord. You see that in verses 1 and 2? Praise the Lord. Oh my, get it together, soul. <laughs> he said to his inmost being, inmost being, soul, don't forget all of his benefits. Worship the Lord. Now, why are we to worship the Lord? Well, the Lord commands us to worship Him. But why are we to worship the Lord? Listen to this. God does not need your worship. God is not an egomaniac. He's not. Why are we told in Scripture to worship God? God commands us to worship Him. Why? Just as with all of God's commands, the command to worship Him is for our good. You get that? God's command to worship Him is for our good. We need a time to re be reminded of what God is like. We need a time to be reminded of what He has done for us in Christ. We need a time to be reminded of His promises that He will fulfill. And when we come together in worship and we sing God's Word, we pray God's Word, we preach and teach God's Word, what we're doing is reminding ourselves of the truth. Do you realize this, folks? You've been lied to all week. The world has lied to you. Media, entertainment of one form or another, television, movies, things on the computer that you watch, they lie to us and say that this world is all that there is. There is no God. And what we need to do is come back together on Sunday and be refreshed in the truth, the truth of God's Word. Worship is vital for the Christian. That's one of the hurtful things with this um, epidemic that we are in the midst of. God's people can't, some of them can't get together. And they desperately want to be here, but they can't be here because of physical issues. It's so important to put yourself under the Word of God so that you renew your mind regarding what is truth. When we lived in Tampa, Florida, I was a junior high kid and Dad was stationed at MacDill Air Force Base. Dad had a boat. And we'd go out uh, in the bay on that boat sometimes. And we'd come to a little island out there and, and go on the island and have a picnic. The whole family would. Well, Dad would ask me to take the anchor and throw it out into the water. Now, the anchor was heavy. So I had to strain and throw it in the water. But that anchor held that boat in an area, wouldn't let it be taken out farther into the sea. Listen, worship is an anchor for your soul. Worship is for you, God's people, not God. 
He doesn't need anything. He doesn't need our worship. Now, he enjoys our worship, but he doesn't need our worship. We need worship. Why? Because it reminds us of the truth in this fallen world. Brings us back plumb to the truth in this fallen world. All right. Now, let's look at some of the um, benefits that are ours. Some reasons to thank the Lord. Those first two things are kind of side roads, but now I want to come back to the main thrust, and it is reasons for us to be thankful this Thanksgiving. First reason is this. God forgives us all our sins. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you have been forgiven of all your sins. Look at verse 3. Who forgives all your sins? Look at verse 4. Who redeems your life from the pit? Look at verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, He has forgiven you all your sins. Uh, look at verse 3. Verse 3. Does your version say this? Who forgives almost all your sins? Is that what your version says? What does your version say? All. Now, let me help you with a technical term. In Hebrew, here's what all means. It means, are you ready for this? You need to write this down. It means all. You got the technical meaning of all? It means all. So, what God is telling us is this. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ... You have been forgiven of how many of your sins? All. all. And all means all. Past, present, future, right? All means all. So that would include past, present, and future. All. Notice what verse 12 says. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. They're gone. You see, when you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, your sin debt was paid for by Christ on the cross, and your sins are gone. Some years ago, uh, we bought a Toyota Avalon, and I borrowed some money uh, to buy the car. I went in debt. But every month, I'd write a check to pay off that debt. Now the car's paid for. The car's paid for. The car's paid for. Now I owe nothing on the car. Wouldn't it be silly? Wouldn't it be silly if I kept writing a check every month to pay for that car when it's been paid for? Now, the bank would probably accept it. <laughs> but wouldn't it be silly? Now, listen, folks. Hear what God's saying to you. All your sins, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, has been paid for. You'll never see them again. Jesus paid for it. How does all of that work, Jim? Well, listen carefully now. God can't just say, oh, I'm just going to forget about Jim's sin. See, that wouldn't be just. But God is just. So, my sins have to be paid for. What happened on the cross was that Jesus paid for my sins. And if I become a follower of Jesus, or when I did become a follower of Jesus, then at that moment, Jesus' death on the cross paid for every one of my sins. Past, present, future, He paid for 
All of them. Isn't that good? All of them. That's the first reason to be thankful. Second reason, second benefit to be thankful, for which we can be thankful, is the healing of our body. Look at uh, verse 3, the B part. And heals all your diseases. That's an eschatological promise. That's a future promise. It cannot refer to today because all of us are not healed from all of our diseases for all time. Right? Now, here's what happens. We pray and ask God to heal as we should, and sometimes God does heal. Sometimes he will touch a person supernaturally, and they'll be healed. You've seen that. I've seen that. Then sometimes God will use doctors and medicine and equipment that he has allowed to come into being to bring healing. Sometimes God heals supernaturally. Sometimes God heals through means. But now listen, even when a person experiences healing... They're going to get sick again and die. There will be a time when there will be no more sickness, disease, pain, heartache, or death. But that will be when we get home. Anyone who is experiencing healing here, it's only temporary. Think about Lazarus. Lazarus died. Jesus raised him from the dead. But what happened one day? Lazarus died again. If God intervenes and heals for a time, now understand that it's only Temporary. We have good friends in Missouri. Um, Sharon is the wife. Her husband, Clyde, is a pastor in Springfield. Uh, Sharon, two years ago, I think it was, had uh, uh, bypass surgery. Um, they put in 14 stents and did three bypasses. And Sharon's doing great now. In other words, she was healed. Through a doctor's ability that God gave, through medical advancements, God healed Sharon. But you know what's going to happen one day? Sharon's going to get sick again. And then one day she'll die. But you see, one day all of us who are followers of Jesus... All of our diseases will be healed when we get home. Another reason, another benefit to thank the Lord for at Thanksgiving is the truth that He heals all of our diseases. Just not now, but one day. Another benefit. Uh, notice, if you will, at verses 4b and 5, and crowns you with love and compassion. Think about the good things that God has given. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord is the one who has given to you good things in life. And all of us have good things that God has given to us. Many good things. Let me just run down a list of the good, some of the good things in my life. My wife, Beverly. Our children, Benjamin and Elizabeth. And they're both coming in this week for Thanksgiving. And then their mates, Cody and Julie. And then our grandchildren, our grandsons, Hunter and Jake the Magnificent. 
lovely home that we have in Athens. That's a good gift of God's grace. Job. You guys give me a job. Thank you so much. It's nice to have a place to come on Sunday morning and preach and teach God's Word. And that's such a a joy for us. Thank you for that. And thank God for setting that up. A nice conversation with dear friends is good. A nice meal shared with good friends is even better. Now put your thinking hats on. Notice it says in verse 5, who satisfies your desires with good things. God has given you good things just like he's given me good things. Now why does he do that? You say, oh, well, he loves me. Well, that's true, but take a step deeper than that. Here it is. God gives good things because God is good. See, God's not mean. God's not evil. He's not malevolent. He's not a child molester. God is good. And He's good all the time. Let me read you some verses which talk of that. Psalm 25, 8. Good and upright is the Lord. Psalm 34, 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. 1 Chronicles 16, 34. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Psalm 100, verses 4 and 5. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name, for the Lord is good. And his love endures forever. James 1.17 Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of heavenly lights and whom there is no shadow of turning. Oh, please get that down deep in your heart. The God that you follow is good. It is impossible for him... I know this is not proper grammar using a double negative. It, but let me say it this way. It is impossible for him not to be good. He's always good. That is his nature. That's who he is. We're even told in Romans 8, 28 that when bad things happen, what does he do? He takes it and over time turns it to good. Why? Because he's good. And it would make sense, would, he not because, would it not, because he's good, that he would give good gifts to his children. Community Baptist Church in Waterloo, Iowa, is an African-American Southern Baptist church. I've preached there many times. Ted Keyes is the pastor. And in the service, invariably, Ted will say something like this, God is good all the time. And the people respond, all the time, God is good. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. You believe that? It's true. Ted would also say something like this. I've heard him say it several times. He said, God's better to us than we would be to ourselves. Isn't that good? Now that's your God. That's the God who loves you to pieces. God is good. And because he's good, he gives good gifts. Well, there's a fourth benefit here. And, and, and I'm going to lump some things together because of time. Look at verses 6 through 11. And what I want you to see is God's grace here, his abundant grace. Um, the Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. If someone's being oppressed, um, the oppressor is God's enemy. Verse 7. 
He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. All you have to do if you want to understand a little bit more about God and his ways is study the Old Testament and how God interacted with his people in the Old Testament. He made his ways known to the folks in the Old Testament. Then look at verse 8 and following. Here it describes the nature of our God. The Lord, our Lord, your Lord, is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. Now, three words I want to lift out of here and emphasize. Justice, mercy, and grace. Justice, mercy, and grace. Our God is just. Our God is merciful. Our God is abundantly graceful to us. He gives us not what we deserve. He blesses us again and again and again. I want to tell you a story to illustrate this. Once upon a time, there was a pastor, uh, and they had three little boys. Mama sang in the choir. And the little boys would sit right down front. Now, most of the time, the little boys were well-behaved. I say most of the time. There just happened to be this one Sunday when they were being little boys. They were picking on each other. Now, they were making such a ruckus picking on each other that they were disturbing Dad as he was trying to preach. And not only that, the people were being distracted because the boys were on the front row. Uh, I never had Beverly and the kids sit on the front row, by the way. They always sat in the back when our kids were little. But anyway, these three kids were on the front. They were making... Dad finally stopped his preaching, looked at those three boys and said, Boys, come up here. Now those boys were petrified. What's Daddy going to do? Shoot us in front of everybody? Whip us in front of everybody? What's he going to do? Come on up here, sons. The three of them came up. You can imagine they weren't real <laughs> in a hurry to get up here. They came up slowly up to the platform. And then dad said, follow me. And they left the platform and went off to the right side. And they're off to the right side there were some peanut butter cookies that had been baked for the pastor and his family by someone in the congregation. Hint, hint. <laughs> Probably won't go anywhere, but it doesn't matter. I'll hit, hint, hint, anyway. Anyway, so he got the cookies, gave each boy a cookie, and said, now, Go back to your seats. Now, the congregation's watching this while I. They were thinking the boys were going to get whipped or something right there, get yelled at or something right there. But the pastor, daddy, he's giving them cookies. So the pastor stands up before the congregation and says this. Let me use this as an illustration. Justice. They should have got a whipping. Mercy. They didn't get a whipping. Grace. They got peanut butter cookies. You see the difference between the words? Now listen, child of God. On the cross, God satisfied his justice by punishing Jesus for our sins and extends to us mercy. But you see, God's ways with his people doesn't stop with mercy, does it? He just lavishes upon us 
peanut butter cookies. You see that? He lavishes upon us grace upon grace upon grace. He doesn't just extend us mercy. He extends us abundant grace. Think about all of the blessings that you have in your life. That's because of God's abundant grace that has been showered upon you. Okay, I'm through. I hope you'll remember some of the reasons to be thankful this Thanksgiving. Thank Him for your salvation. Thank Him for the fact that there will be ultimate healing one day. Thank Him for the good things in your life. And thank Him for the abundant grace that He showers upon you. Now, here's your assignment. Thanksgiving is Thursday. Before you bite into the turkey, I want you to do this. Even before you pray a blessing, I want you to do this. I want you to take time and go around the table and let each person tell what they're thankful for to God this Thanksgiving. We've all been blessed abundantly. Just stop and let each person... That's what we do as a tradition at our house. We've done it for years. Let each person take just a moment and say, I'm thankful to God for. For you see, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we have been blessed abundantly. Amen? Yeah, let's pray. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Again, thank you for your attention this morning. I trust the Lord spoke into your heart. What has he said to you now? Again, you pay me such honor in, in being so focused and attentive on what I'm saying. But the Holy Spirit speaks to us through the preached word. What has God said to your heart? Has he reminded you of how blessed you are? Be a thankful person. Uh, not someone who is grumbling and complaining. If, if you are going through a season of great difficulty now, the greatest advice I could give to you is get along with God and remember all His benefits and begin praising Him. It will change you on the inside to do that. Remember the gift of salvation. Be thankful for that. Be thankful that one day disease will all be gone. Death no more when we get home. Thank Him for the good things that He has given. Let me lead us in a word of prayer, and then we'll have our closing hymn. Sovereign Lord, we are amazed at Your grace. It's not that You just extend mercy to us. That's certainly more than we deserve. You've provided the way of salvation. You've extended mercy to us through Jesus. But Lord, your grace, your goodness, your mercy continues to be showered upon us again and again and again. God, help us to be mindful of how blessed we really are as your people and help us to be thankful and remember how good you are, what you're like, what you've done for us, and what you are doing for us now, and what you've promised to do for us in the future. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together and sing our closing hymn. Jesus, 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 there's just something about 
Remember, we won't meet Wednesday night. Um, there'll be no prayer meeting this Wednesday night. And Tim, again, what time do we come by between 4 and 5? Between 4 and 5. And um, the deacons will give you a meal. And then you can go on your merry way. All right? Let me pray for you. Father, we are thankful for Thanksgiving. God, give us the grace Give us the grace, particularly this week out of the year, to remember all the blessings that are ours and be thankful. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Happy Thanksgiving! <laughs>